Hello and welcome. I'm back. I know it's been a moment since I last created a video and I want to take a few seconds to truly thank you for bearing with me throughout my hiatus. It was an eventful summer and I found it quite difficult to get to my camera. But here I am, just in time for spooky season and I have so many projects planned for us that I cannot wait to show you. In the meantime, I've been decorating the house to get into the Halloween spirit and digging some graves and finding time to edit and film this one for you guys. So I um, don't think that we should delay any longer. I think we should get right into the video. I truly hope that you enjoy. I do have a rather busy day today, so um, we'll just cut right to the film. All right, guys, happy Halloween. Okay. There's truly a magic that surrounds antiques. And when you look at the shops through all of these treasures, you can see and feel the love that someone once had for them. Uh, I can only imagine the stories behind some of them. In a way, it's a little sad knowing that they're there waiting for the right person to take them home. But on the other hand, how exciting it can be when they find someone to take the time to pick them up, brush them off, and breathe new life into them again. I wasn't in the market for anything in particular when I ventured to my favorite antique shop, but then I saw this painting, one that I wanted to bring back to life, so I grabbed it off the wall and took it to the register, only to notice something very interesting written on the back. The cashier walked over and said, oh yes, that one was done by an inmate at the Ellis unit in Texas. His name was Robert Dawson. I immediately thought that it was even more interesting and I had hoped to find some information on this Mr. Dawson. He dated the painting 1989, so I started looking from there. Yet after long hours of research, I came up empty handed, not ever knowing his crime. Though I did learn some interesting things about the Ellis unit where he painted this. It was said to be the toughest convicts and from 1965 to 1999, the unit housed death row inmates. So I think it's safe to assume he was in there for something pretty serious. I knew I didn't want to take over the painting, that I wanted it to be more of a collaboration between Mr. Dawson and I. My plan was to clean it up, make some small adjustments, and then add my little ideas. I removed all the old nails that were holding the painting into place and then took a cloth to lightly remove the dirt and the dust. Next, I wanted to start the part that I was most excited for, and that would be our main character of the painting. So I quickly sketched an outline and then took an ivory white acrylic paint to start on our friendly ghost enjoying Mr. Dawson's Lake. I knew from the very start that I wanted to place him on the end of the dock. It just felt right. I then took a dove gray paint next to add some light shadows and then took the same dove gray color to start on my ghost reflection. I didn't want it to be as bright white because water reflections can be a bit more dull in color. It was a bit tricky to do the reflection, but with a little bit of patience, I was finally happy with the outcome. Next, I mixed some black, gray, and white acrylic paint to get different shades of shadows for the ghost and his reflection. Once I blended those together, I started to sketch and paint his eyes and mouth. Then I did the same with his reflection. I really enjoyed how his facial expression turned out, almost a peaceful look upon him. I then added some small details and a little sparkle to his eyes. Now it was on to the spooky woods behind him. I took the yellow acrylic paint and created some eyes in the woods, along with shadows around them. I got the impression that they were envious of our ghost friend coming out from the darkness to face himself in his own reflection. Uh, 
I made my way across the painting to one of the things that I wanted to change the most, the teal hillside. It drew my eyes there and I found it to be rather distracting, so I mixed some brown and gray paint to make a very muted color to paint the hillside. I also added some yellows and oranges to make it look like autumn leaves in the distance. I also quickly touched up the shoreline. Now it was time to remove the bird. I didn't really want him to take away from our ghost friend, so I tried to match the watercolor as best as possible and then used some white paint to blend it all together. Then I went in with some yellows and browns to add some of the grasses back after I painted over them. And then I did the exact same thing with the tree reflections on the other side. Grimm also likes to give his artist opinion, which I value very, very much. Another thing that had bothered me about this painting was the use of the lime green paint in the leaves and only on the left side of the painting. So I started with a dark green color to cover them up and then I built up some color on top of that with yellows and browns to keep the fall colors alive. I also took some time to touch up the shoreline on this side as well. It only felt right to put our little shadow creatures on the other side of the painting as well. These were far enough up in the woods that the reflection would play a part, so I added the eyes in the water as well. And I think this one has to be my favorite. He looks a little confused or afraid of something, in my opinion. I used watered down black acrylic paint to create the shadows around the eyes and then used a cloth to dab any excess paint. Then I moved on to the last touch up that I had planned. I wanted to blend the clouds out just a bit more. I did water down some of the gray and white paint just so that I could blend it very well with the old painting. Now it was time to sign my name next to Mr. Dawson's. He signed his in 1989, and here I am signing mine in 2021, 32 years later. And now on to upcycling the frame. I was really excited about this part because I could see just how beautiful the wood was under the old stain, scratches, and bumps that it now wore. Who knows how long it's been in that shop, or how it came from Texas to Pennsylvania, but certain things come to us for certain reasons. I started by sanding all the flat surfaces with my sander, and then went in by hand to sand the front, since it couldn't be reached otherwise. This did take a little while, and some elbow grease, but it was well worth it. I then finished it off with my Dremel on some of the places that I could get it to. Now that it's all sanded, you can see how beautiful the wood truly is. I'm going to restain it in the color of mahogany. And in all honesty, guys, <laughs> wear your gloves for staining. I couldn't find my darn gloves anywhere, and I hate stain because it never comes off your skin. And of course, after I was done staining and all was said and done, I found my gloves the very next day. I also came across one of my sponge brushes that I ended up using to help apply the stain as well. I like to really either use sponges or cloths for the best results on stain. I really don't like using paint brushes. If I went on a little too heavy with the stain, I just used a cloth to wipe off any excess. On to painting the gold trim. I could tell it was gold at one time, but the vibrancy definitely died out. So I took an acrylic paint in gold and painted a few layers. One layer was definitely not enough. I also think that gold leaf paint would be a good option for this. I taped the edges so that I wouldn't get any paint on my newly stained frame. Once I removed the tape, I looked for any gold paint that may have leaked through, 
and just use some water and a clean brush just to clear that up. I then glued down any of the canvas that had come apart and used some masking tape to cover the edges to stop any further fraying. I didn't want to do anything to cover or replace the cardboard on the back since it had such cool information written back there. And maybe one day I can use it to possibly find something out about Mr. Dawson. It was time. Time to put the painting back where it belongs. So I gently hammered new nails into place and then replaced the photo hanger on the back. And it was ready, ready for a reveal. And I was so excited. And in the back of my head, I was wondering, what would Mr. Dawson think? Would he like it? Would he laugh at it? What made him paint this scene? Did he have to, or was it his choice? Would he hate me for doing this to his painting? Or would he appreciate it? Does he even remember ever painting it? I guess I'll never know. Just like I'll never know what his crime actually was and why he was serving time at the Ellis Unit in Texas.